This is Action Sports Jack's First and Ten Training Camp. Sponsored by Farrah and Farrah, the exclusive personal injury law firm of the Jaguars. That was a fun moment at camp this morning. Evan Ingram being the fan favorite. He is fun moment for that fan and several others who got to play catch with one of the top tight ends in the National Football League. Ingram still the first one out to practice daily, always working on the craft, and, well, it has paid off for number 17. Welcome to the first and 10 training camp. I'm Brent Martino back to back days for the offense. And this one was really good. Some not so good news with multiple injuries to report as well. Plus a conversation with Tank and one of the Jags best defenders seems primed for another big season. Those are just some of the topics, but let's start with the big story going into today. The pads went on. Sounds more exciting than it probably looked at times, but it is the next step. And Doug Peterson said yesterday things will really ramp up over the weekend and we could see some separation with some of the battles on the roster. The good news about the pads, we do get to see the big fellas working a little bit more and it means a little bit more once the pads go on. Trevor Lawrence's best day of training camp was Tuesday. Start stacking them up. He was sharp, really. All the quarterbacks were pretty sharp overall. Trevor with a touchdown to Christian Kirk, one to Travis Etienne, courtesy of Jaguars.com as well. Brian Thomas Jr. also had another big play. So a lot more to talk about and smile about this week so far on the offensive side. Hey, he's one of the best linebackers in the game, and not everyone knows it still. Amazingly, Foye Aluakin has been sensational for the Jaguars. He's a pro, he's a tackling machine, and last year proved to be a big play guy too. A reworked contract in the offseason led to an extension, and in this Ryan Nielsen defense, he's going to move to the weak side linebacker spot. Foye has established himself as a staple on this defense, and there's no signs of slowing down. So I'm over here trying to win, trying to do my job, really just trying to impress the new staff here. Uh, I know Coach Nielsen is a pretty, pretty hard guy to impress. I'm trying to be the best for him uh, because I think if I play well for him, he's going to take my career to a whole new level. The way he finishes plays, you know, he's aggressively going to get the ball, punch outs. Um, and that's, I mean, he's had a really good career so far. And so you, you're seeing that. It's really cool to watch him because he's, he's taken his role and kind of made it his. So that's all the good stuff. Here's the not so good stuff. Tough day on the injury front for the Jags. Andrew Wingard suffered a knee injury in a collision with Tank Bigsby. Wingard did not return to practice. Severity of that knee injury unknown at this point. Hopefully get an update tomorrow. Tavon Campbell, the cornerback, quad contusion. Brandon Sheriff he had a nose laceration. He did return to practice. He's a tough guy. Ventro Miller tight hamstring and that's one to watch because he missed all last year with an ACL second year linebacker out of Florida. Let's stay on the Jags defense. We had a thought on our show today in 2017 when Saxonville erupted to dominate the season. Did we know that they were going to be that good when they were in training camp? I don't think so. Well, the early returns are good on this defense, the 2024 edition. We wondered on the Brenton Austin show today. What if this defense is really, really good? You know, it's going to be hard to tell until we actually see it um, in a game setting. You know, in a preseason game, maybe you can tell a little bit. But actually, when we see week one against Miami, you're going to find out really quick. Because in terms of NFL offenses, Miami is that team. I think they have the potential to be a great team. You know, I mean, we talked about maybe having the possible the two best bookends in the entire NFL. When I said two best bookends, I mean, you know, combination of bookends. But obviously, you've addressed the interior defensive line in the draft as well. So hopefully you short up that. And then, yeah, like I've said, I mean, I've been a fan of Ronald Darby. I think he's played some great football the past couple of years. I think that immediately adds a little bit of a of an increase now into your skill set of your secondary. Jerry and Jones could come in and fill in a, a void as well. And like you mentioned, Darnell Savage, where is he going to fit in? So you have some good guys. You have guys coming from great programs or great, you know, traditions in terms of winning football. It has all the combinations to be a great defense. Now, can they put it all together? Can they pick up this scheme? Can they do it in a game? Time will tell. You know, but as far as on paper is concerned, Brent, yeah, I'm willing to say that they could be a good, if not great, defense. All right, we got more of that coming up on a Wednesday. Here's the lineup on the Action Sports X 24-7 network. Starts with Miller, Miller and Moulton in the morning. 
And then our show live from Furniture Source on Blanding Boulevard tomorrow. Come on out and say hello. Cup date with Stuart Weber at 1 o'clock. A week with Action Sports Shacks with Olivia Tassley at 1.30. And a little bit later on after the Stripe Show podcast, we've got the Young and Norvell show in the afternoon. So find it on ActionNewsJacks.com and the Action News Jacks app. Tough year for Tank in 2023. Why year number two will be better for the Jags running back. We'll have the story and conversation coming up next. And very cool to see former Jaguars owner Wayne Weaver out at practice today. He hasn't stopped by much over the last decade to see the Jaguars, but he must be beaming with pride to see the news of this summer and another 30 years in Jacksonville for the team he helped bring to the River City. You're watching Action Sports Jacks, first and 10, Training Camp. Sponsored by Farrah & Farrah, the exclusive personal injury law firm of the Jaguars. Your birthday's exactly one month away. <laughs> any plans, any wishes as you go into this next season and turn a year wiser? I just wish we'd go to the playoffs, have a successful season, and win the Super Bowl. Olivia has birthdays on her mind because hers is tomorrow and she celebrates it for like a month. We'll all take that for a birthday wish though, what Tank said. Anniversary gift, Christmas gift, give up gifts for a year for all that. Well, Liv probably won't. Tank Bigsby will be 23 years old next month. Welcome back to First and Ten Training Camp, everybody. I'm Brent Martineau. Sometimes we have to remember how young these guys are. Still growing up, still developing, still a lot of runway in their careers. It's a young league in the NFL, and that means take Bigsby's tough rookie season wasn't the finish line. It was weird year for the third year, uh, second year back out of Auburn. A lot of hype faded to some really strange mistakes. He flashed quite a bit in the last game of the season, and the Jags will lean on him more in 2024. That is at least the plan. Action Sports Shacks Olivia Tassley talking to Tank. First day with the pads on, still haven't taken them off. How's it feel? It feel good to come out and compete with the pads on for the first time. Uh, haven't been played football like that in about a couple months, but it feels good. Yeah, Press Taylor and Doug Peterson have said that they want to use you more this mm -hmm. upcoming season, and they noted that it's because of your confidence level, really taking a leap forward. What added to that, or what sparked that confidence? Uh, just knowing like how the NFL worked, you know. Uh, you know, I just always told myself, like, when I get here, I got goals that I want to accomplish. But, you know, just seeing how it is up here and saying that, okay, when I get the opportunity, I'm putting my best foot forward and don't look back. Short yardage situations were a little difficult for this team last season. How are you guys approaching it now? It seemed like you were doing really good out there during drills today, but how are you guys approaching it this season? Uh, you know, we're just being aggressive to it. You know, we got to, when, when it's third and one, we got to be, who we are. We got to be our identity. We got to hit it. We got to go. We got to figure out what we're going to do. And um, on short yardage days, we, we work at that, get better every day. So whatever whatever it comes with, you know, if they put me in the role, they put someone in the role, I'm sure we got to put our best foot forward and do our job. I'm going to read some stats to you. 50 carries, 132 yards, two touchdowns. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction to that? It ills me, you know, because coming off, you know, being in top back in the SEC, whatever you want to call it, you know, just starting all your life, it, it's, it's kind of challenging to hear that to me. But, um, you know, I just think it's not good enough and it got to be better. Mm -hmm. Does that fuel you for this season, add extra little fire to you? Uh, you know, stats don't fuel me, you know, it's my mentality that I just want to be great. So mm -hmm. I know coming, doing the great things, going, the stats will come with it. So I don't, I'm not a guy that's going and be like these, this, this, that. I know when I handle my job, it's going to happen. So mm -hmm. put my best foot forward, like I said, keep God first and everything going to happen. This is really your first season with an offense that you're coming back to. You know, all through college, you didn't have that. Does it feel weird or is it more comfortable? I mean, how does it feel to you to have your first consistency, really? Uh, like, actually, what you said earlier about the confidence level, mm -hmm. that's that's kind of where I'm coming from. Like, I'm in my second I'm second year in this offense, and I kind of know it. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I'm not able to get a new offense. and study some new plays and come in camp focus on messing up you know i can just put my best foot forward and go and work at something i already know so it's amazing and that's kind of what a confident part come back to uh jags hope that's a nice one-two punch with him and etn this was cool this young man and his family made this sign and showed up at practice today they got to see trevor put on a show out on the field a lot of highlight real plays and good on the jaguars because they arranged for a very cool moment trevor posing for a picture 1,300 miles from Monterey, Mexico, 
and every mile worth it. High school football practices continue. Our blitz previews continue as well. The tale of the Tigers from Lake City coming up next. And uh, those throwbacks doing pretty well in that pro shop at the Miller Electric Center. Everybody's still fired up about that. When you think sports, you think Action Sports Jacks, the official station of the Jaguars, on location for every game. But the most experienced team in town doesn't stop there. From high school football to the big events in the area, Action Sports Jacks is always on. Now, we take that to a new level. Action Sports Jacks 24-7 is around-the-clock coverage of the teams you love and the moments you can't miss. The best local sports in Jacksonville on Action Sports Jacks 24-7. You're watching Action Sports Jacks First and Ten Training Camp, sponsored by Farah and Farah, the exclusive personal injury law firm of the Jaguars. Uh, high school football season here. Practices underway. We'll unveil some of our expanded Friday night coverage in the fall in the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 network later in the week. But let's preview some teams like Friday nights in Lake City, Columbia are pretty good. Brian Allen in his second year of his second stint at Columbia after a couple of years off from coaching. Put the foundation back in last year. Hopes to build off it this season with one message. And, and we always have something that we take in every year. It's re relentless pursuit. With everything that we do, uh, relentless pursuit. How we attack the classroom, we want relentless pursuit. How we attack the field, we want relentless pursuit. How we attack our, our training, relentless pursuit. And the guys have bought into that big time. And it's re been really good uh, this year. Newest episode of After the Game with Bulls coach Matt Toblin is out. You can check it out on your YouTube channel on the playlist or also on the Action Sports Jacks 24-7 Network Friday. Miami Marlins are stacking the deck again. The minor leagues made a bunch of moves around the trade deadline, brought in, or they moved nine players. They brought in ten players. The Jacksonville Jumbo Trip, you might want to get a program when you go this week as they start the homestand tonight. And uh, they've got some of those new players, including Davis and De Los Santos. Very, very good. Have a good night. Back at camp tomorrow, everybody. Thanks for watching Action Sports Jacks First and Ten Training Camp. Sponsored by Farah and Farah, the exclusive personal injury law firm of the Jaguars. Action Sports Jacks Primetime, Saturday at 1030 on Fox 30.